I'm Steve, Mark's around, and this is Smokey, Steve, and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back, and happy Saturday! It is the weekend, so we know what that means. Um, having dark roast with just some uh, sugar-free vanilla the uh, sweetener, uh, creamer type stuff. The supermarket had next to nothing, but they had that. So, and of course an unfinished basement, and I have to show you my shirt. I'm just here for the food. <laughs> I know, I know. She gives me something to make content from. The least I can do is make a half, a, you know, a shirt for her. So I hope everyone's well, everyone's safe, doing what you need to do to keep you and the people you care about and those around you safe. Um, it is snowing today here. It is May, I want to remind everybody, and it is snowing. So that's what we're, we're at. Mark is tending to the garden and throwing stuff over everything so it doesn't die. So... I guess we'll pick up where we left off. Now, our fair lady, Chantal, Chantal Marie, Booty Beauty, Big Beautiful Me, um, has taken a turn this week. So, the way the week starts is unrecognizable from the way the week ends. Um, she did take a turn at the end of the week, pretty much yesterday. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll just see how this kind of declines precipitously. So, where we left off, she was maybe putting the toe in the water of a plant-based life. Um, she had bought a bunch of plant-based food, um, and she was making meals around it, and she had this, like, pastrami and bagel with vegan stuff. I don't know. It was all vegan. All vegan. Um, and she reiterated she's not going vegan, but she's just trying some of the stuff out. So we kind of left it there. Um, that, and she was planning to turn Pete's into some sort of Barbie doll, which I was eager to see. So, the first video, we're gonna watch the ring with the glasses. Pizza, pizza, Pete's mukbang. Now, they each got a pizza. He got pepperoni and cheese, and she got a plant-based pizza. Okay. So, and a side of vegan jerky. Uh, fake chorizo and fake cheese. She's eyeing his pizza the entire time. Like, she wants it. She even says as much that his looks better. Um, and they were going to get Little Caesars, but they had no plant-based options. You'll see how this is so important now and doesn't mean anything later. Uh, she doesn't like it. You can just tell she doesn't like the pizza. It looks cool. I don't like it. It doesn't look good. Um, so this is pretty ridiculous. It's not a, not surprising really, but it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, they just BS and chit chat about movies during the rest of the video. She still stares at the camera when he's talking about games and anime and his kind of niche interests that aren't for everybody. And she'll eat and look at the camera like... Wow. And give him these little courtesy replies, like, cool. That's amazing. Awesome. And I don't think she dislikes Pete's, but I just, I don't know. I'm not sure she found, like, the most comfortable place for him in her videos yet. It's not that. <laughs> um, so, anyway. She's fighting a low mood, also. She's mentioned her mood going up and down, how she deals with depression. Um... So, and she has her chick, her ticket booked for Jamaica as soon as all this pandemic dies down. Uh, she had a very short video, a Q&A request for Pete's. It was like 20 seconds long. And he's going to do a Q&A later in the week. Pete's, next video, Pete's lets me do his makeup. Now, Pete's has shaved. And wow, it's a difference. Chantal said he looks different. I think he looks different. Mark said he doesn't look good at all. Um, she's going for the man bun with him. Now, as we talked about last week, Pete's has more hair than I do, but not much. And she addressed that in putting up said man bun by taking the powder she uses to fill in her own bald spots and putting a very generous amount, and it seemed to work, on his head. Um, so well that I'm thinking maybe I'll get on Amazon and see what I can find, you know? Um, I've been playing with my hair a lot lately. We're going to be bleaching it again at some point soon. So, whatever's left. <laughs> What's it going to do? Fall out? So, um, she wanted to make him look a little less serial killer, her words, and that's that's good for him. She said she doesn't know how to do man buns. And you can tell she doesn't by the end. Here's the thing. Men don't know how to do man buns. That's why they look so messy and, and sloppy and not much thought into it. And if you're Jason Momoa, you can pull it off. And if you're Pete's, you can't. She gives him a bun kind of like hers, like the top bun. Um, I had a friend um, who I had met through 
the legal system, who had very strong opinions about women and how you could read certain types of women. Now, I'm not saying these are hard and fast rules, and I am, am not anti-woman. Um, but he had said, you can tell a lot about a woman by how she styles her hair. And women who may not have all their stuff together and may go off the handle very easily tend to wear top buns. That was his assessment. I'm not saying that's true. I'm not saying it's true for either of them. It was just an observation one person had offered to me once. Just putting it out there. So, um, Mark had asked, is the point to make him look like a girl? And I think, I don't know. I think Pete's pretty easygoing, easy breezy. Um, his masculinity doesn't seem to be something he clings to too fiercely. So I don't, I don't think he minds so much. Um, I don't know if I like him better shaped or not. It's hard for me to say. Um, he I says, don't. you don't like him better shaped? No. Nope. He's got baby fit. He's got the cheeks. He's got like baby cheeks. Yeah, he does. Not the, not always a good thing. She doesn't put any eye makeup on him, but she, I, I don't know. All I could think was like ratchet prom. <laughs> like, like just, it didn't look, God bless him. God bless him. Um, so that was, that was basically the video. She basically, she stole his heart in that video. I mean, she put him on YouTube, put his hair up in a bun and painted his face. I mean, she might as well have just peed on his leg to mark this ter mark her territory. Uh, next, <laughs> big breakfast mukbang with Pete's and Q&A. So this was the same day, I believe, because he's still made up and, um, it's not vegan. It's not vegan. But she said she needs to eat regular food, what she usually eats, because she was very crappy. So, um, yesterday, the vegan pizza, the face said it all, pretty much. I mean, she just didn't want to eat it. Um, and she did confess that she ate the leftovers of Pete's pizza. And then she's sitting down now to two lumberjack breakfasts, it looks like. Um, plus a Belgian waffle. And Pete's isn't eating at all. He's just there going through the phone looking for the question and answer thing to go through. So this was very boring. It was like worse than one of the Amberlynn Reed Q&As that she's done so many of. And we've done Q&As. And sometimes if it's like, not every question's interesting, not every question has an interesting answer, but this was a bit much. Um, examples would be, is there anything annoying about Chantal? And Pete said she can be a bit much. He's very polite. Um, why do you hold your fork like a shovel? He said, I don't know. Um, so basically the gist, if you go through this, because this was like almost 40 minutes long. Pete's is pretty lazy. He likes movies. He doesn't wear cologne. Um, he's never been tested for Asperger's. He thinks he may be on the autism spectrum, but his therapist says no. Pete's used to have a driver's license, but he doesn't like driving, so he let it expire. Um, he struggled to come up with three things he liked about Chantal, and Kel Surprise, she eats his food on the Lolo, his groceries. He keeps his snacks in his room. Um, so this was, like, YouTube ambient. It just, you know. So, next, Taco Bell mukbang, Stacker Big Box. And it starts off with a warning to all of us about how we should react to this. And it says, just let me live my life, my weight, my problem, I've heard it all. Um, leave it all in escape is how she wants to feel. And she does that by going, you know, knee deep into a chalupa, pretty much. Uh, she eats on her emotions. This is not news. A lot of people eat on their emotions. But it's such a direct correlation that even she seems to recognize, but for whatever reason doesn't seem to intervene on and do anything about over any amount of, of time. She's invested in doing something about it, at least on the surface, for days. It's only days at this point. Um, let's see. She, <laughs> she looks a little bigger in this video. None of these angles are helping her out, whether it's the car, you know, you can only chalk up so much to bad lighting before you have to say this person looks different and they look bigger. Not that bigger's badder, bigger's unhealthier. Um, and I'm in my 30s, too. You can only stay so fat for so long before your body starts to give out. You know, you can see 20-year-old people with tight skin and no cellulite and nothing sags and there's not a wrinkle. But when you start staying in the in the three to 400-pound range and you're coming in on 40, knees start to go, um, other stuff starts to go, you know, it's not... Well, this is not news. It shouldn't be perceived as news either, but... Um, 
She said Pete's isn't going to be in every single video, so she's doing this one alone, and she has exciting news. She has booked a trip, not just Jamaica, but in February of 2021, she's going to be going, she's allegedly going to be going to the Dominican Republic, Punta Cana, if I might have that right, with 10 of her friends. And this is the part where she said, I don't want to hear about how I have to buy two seats or do this or do that or blah, 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 because that's my business and I'll handle it. And I'm thinking... She had a challenging time walking a couple blocks, and she's afraid of elevators. If there's an elevator there, or if she has to walk a while, you know, it would be unfortunate, though not surprising, if she did go on this vacation. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, she goes. Let's say she gets on the plane and she goes. Um, it would be unfortunate if she had to spend a lot of that time alone in her hotel room, vlogging, taking pictures out the window. Because her friends are active and want to go do stuff and maybe want to do things on the resort and, and get in the water. And, and not that she can't get in a bathing suit. They make decent bathing suits for bigger folks now. Um, nothing wrong with her wanting to show off her body. I don't have an issue with that. Um, but as far as what she can do with that body in terms of recreational activities might be kind of limited. So if she wants to go and read books and play online and film and that's her vacation, that's cool. But... I'm afraid she might be left out a little bit because of her size, which stops her from being able to do everything that she might want to do that they might want to do with her. So just a little rant. Um, so she put a deposit on the trip. Um, she wants to focus on this trip, other traveling once the virus is, you know, subsided to a manageable point where we can travel again, uh, how to make changes, how to make healthier changes. Um, and she said, don't worry, she has a plan. Let me handle it. You know, as her jaw unhinges like an anaconda to take down, you know, a chalupa, she's saying she can handle it. So, you know, whatever. Um, she did say she's moving on with her life. BB only comes up a couple times this week. She mentions that she's been dreaming about him and that she only thinks of him periodically during the day. So she has, you know, found other ways to she's trying to find her single self i guess um okay so she's making vegan shepherd's pie later in the day so she's mixing up you know her fast food and her vegan food and she's just playing with it it looks like at the moment i don't know to what end exactly because vegan food is is not cheap food um i don't find it particularly tasty it's novel if it tastes like what it's supposed to be um you know, if I was going to eat vegan, I'd, I, I would probably skip a lot of the fake meat, even though some of it's good. Um, like, to me, vegan is real food. You eat real food. Um, transitioning to vegan, I could see some of that. But um, she's in the kitchen and she's in a chair. Okay, so she's in the chair eating. That makes sense because they have the island and she's doing a mukbang. And she leans back and she goes to open the fridge. Um, some bigger folks... We'll use a chair in the kitchen. I'm curious if she's one of those bigger folks. Just out of the sake of curiosity, because that would mean that there's another um, thing that is being limited by her by her weight. It might, you know, be another thing that she could gain back if she lost weight. Um, I can see sitting if you're doing, like, a lot of prep. Like, if you're sitting there making gnocchi or peeling potatoes or something like that. But I'm talking about sitting in a chair while you're at the stove. Something like that. The kind of thing you'd see 600-pound life do and they just glide across the kitchen. Um, just just a thought. You know, because to me that would be like a, another warning sign. You know, that you can't stand over a stove because it's too hard to stand for that long. Uh, so the next thing we go into, Pizza Hut mukbang. She mooned the delivery man because her skirt was too short. She did have underwear on. Ugh. I... Mm, Mark, be nice. I'm sorry. You be nice. I'm sorry. So she ordered a large supreme pizza, boneless wings, a cinnamon bun, I think. And um, she only had a smoothie earlier in the day. So this idea that you can cancel, not cancel out, but balance out the unhealthy eating with healthy eating. It's, I mean, your body probably, I'm sure, appreciates the vitamins and, and the fresh fruits and vegetables from the smoothie. But dumping the other stuff on top of it, I don't, I have my suspicions that it might not work to, it might not be like a state of equilibrium that you're, you're finding by, by consuming all that. Um, 
Moon the Delivery Man. I know, okay, she talks about story times, but then she says she can't tell all her story times because a lot of them are TMI and not a, not age appropriate for YouTube. Um, so she tells a story about when she used to work, when she had like an office job. And I guess she had initially an office job at a doctor's office, and then she wanted to get out of that and she wanted to get into a bigger health system at a hospital. So she picked up a job that was going to be a one-year commitment, but it was union, I guess. Um, and then she was looking for a different job within the same uh, hospital, one that paid more and it was more of a permanent position. So she took that job and the doctor she worked for didn't like her, her feelings. They were very stiff. She didn't feel like she was trained appropriately. She thought the doctor didn't like her because she was overweight, which is possible. Um, and maybe the doctor thought of her, you shouldn't be working in healthcare if you're, if you're fat. Uh, I don't know that the doctor thought that about her. It could be Chantal's paranoia. She may have liked her for, it might be like we all experience on YouTube, where people have different problems with Chantal other than her weight, but she perceives it as a criticism of her weight. I think it's a lot more comfortable to say you don't like me because I'm fat rather than you don't like me for some personality reason or some uh, quirk that I have or because you're obnoxious, you know, something like that. It's it's easier to hide behind. They just don't like me because I'm fat. And you could be fat and work in healthcare. I would side with Chantal on that, if that was the actual issue, which I don't think it was. But if it were, yes, you can be fat and work in healthcare. She's a receptionist or a secretary or whatever. She doesn't, you know, it's not like she's a physical therapist where she needs to be able to move people around and stuff. Um, I'm not wrapped entirely tight all days of the year, but I work in mental health. You know, you do what you can when you can. Um... Of course, I work with people because I have lived experience, you know. Chantal wouldn't be working in the nutrition office, I would suspect, but um, nevertheless, we'll, we'll continue. So, she tells that story, and it's a very long story. It's a 40-minute video. Um, she said she didn't like the new position she got. It was too much pressure. She wasn't changed. And somehow, and I don't know under what circumstances something like this would happen, because she wasn't there very long. She started calling out sick because she didn't like it. She stopped showing up. She said they gave her some BS reason that they were firing her. Um, and between her and her union rep and the staff, it turned out she would be getting a settlement for leaving. Plus, she was able to collect unemployment under the condition that she never worked for that hospital again. I feel like there's a lot left out <laughs> to, to that whole story. I feel like there's probably a lot more there. I've heard the settlement story before. I've heard the unemployment story before. But I feel like there's got to be some details that are missing there. Um, even the things she described, excessive absenteeism. I mean, I know I got fired from a union job before. Um, so I can appreciate, you got to do, re you got to be a really bad employee to lose the union job. I mean, you really do. You have to all but kill somebody to, to get fired. So, I don't know. I mean, the settlement's a nice idea, but what, under what circumstances? I don't know. This week proposed to me, like, more questions than answers. It was all these little bits and pieces of things. Like, why does Pete let her paint him in makeup? Why did Chantal get a settlement? Why did she buy all that vegan food? Why is she hitting five fast food restaurants in a day? Well, it wasn't five. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, so, actually, we are at the end. Here we go. Um, fast food funeral. Now, this was probably the most popular video this week. At, at, Reese, at now, if she releases another video, I swear to God, we're going to do it live because I'm not going back watching it and restarting this. Fast food funeral. 44,000 views. Go Chantal. Um... And she says something in this video, which I, I doubt will be accurate at all. <gasps> she put up a new video. We're going to keep filming this. There's going to be a cut, and then you're going to see the rest of it, okay? Uh, fast food funeral. Um, she said warning, triggering, upsetting. It's going to be raw. You know, I love when people say, I'm going to be real and raw in this video. Amberlynn likes the word raw, too. And there's usually nothing very raw or shocking about it. It's usually some bit of eating or some like you guys won't believe how shocking this news is and it's like not shocking at all but she um decides she's either gonna have to quit youtube or change her material now it's may how many times have we done this since january she had a longer bout of just doing mukbangs this time than i've seen in a while it was a much longer stretch so 
I was predicting this kind of video coming a lot sooner, so I was wrong. Because um, I've been thinking for maybe two weeks this was going to come up. But it seems like we may have hit that point. Um, homemade cheeseburgers and what I ate today. Cook with me. Okay, that's the video you're going to see after the cut that we're going to have here. Um, so, again, she wants to quit YouTube or, or change her evil ways. Um, she, it's not working out. She always thinks she has control of it. She has absolutely no control over it. Uh, she's totally in denial. This is where the eating disorder part rears up. When she gets kind of backed into a corner and it becomes a little too much, then it becomes an illness. Then it becomes an addiction. Well, she doesn't identify it always as an addiction, but sometimes she does. It's like she totally gets it, and she doesn't get it at all. It's it's weird. Like, she she's saying textbook stuff, um, and when presented with that, it's she's like, oh, no, you're right, I did I. Yeah, I have food issues. I do. I just, I, you guys are right. You guys have said it and you were right a hundred times. And then two days later, you know, back at the RV's drive through So she doesn't want to have this problem with food anymore. Um, so she's eating all of her favorite junk food today as a funeral. She's such a junkie. I promise I'll change tomorrow. I promise tomorrow's going to be different. And it's always easy to say that you want help when you're, or her binging will say under the influence. I remember, I used to drink a little, just between you. Well, people who drink a little don't drink mouthwash, but I used to drink a little bit. And it's very easy to say you want to change when you're under the influence. Let's say you do something ridiculously stupid when you're intoxicated. We'll talk about me with alcohol. And you're trying to get yourself out of hot water, or you actually did hit an emotional bottom while you're under the influence. And you start calling rehabs, I want to change, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And all those feelings are 100% real. Granted, they're happening under the influence, but those feelings are real. But when the booze wears off, you don't want to go to rehab anymore a lot of times. You want to go back out and drink because the addiction kicks some dust back up and it just wants to be fed. So you go out and do that. So to get through that part, you have to just deal with the discomfort, which she acknowledges in this video of not giving in to all your temptations. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable and in some measure of pain for a while. I mean, that's just the adult part of it, you know. Logic and addiction don't run together. I don't know if a lot of people understand that because I like to think I'm a pretty reasonable person, but if you lay up my addictive behaviors, one against the other past and some present, they don't make any sense at all. They just, they don't, follow it. So this is basically a binge fest. She, um, oh, and no one in her life understands what she's going through. So that happened with BB too. Remember BB didn't understand either? Eight years BB didn't understand any of the th stuff she was going through. And now her, I guess nobody else does either. So she acknowledges that she flip flops, but this time it's for real. She wants to get thin so she can, well, healthy, so she can be dating and traveling and all that stuff. She talks about the discomfort of food withdrawals and that she's going to have to go through it. Okay. Now, I was corrected, maybe two or three months ago, about the reality of food withdrawals and that they are a real thing. And I don't mean to diminish people's discomfort or suffering. We all have our own battles that we all deal with. That said, on a spectrum of suffering from addiction and withdrawal, um, Mark was, was an opiate addict. You know, pills, heroin, all that kind of stuff. And he's been clean for, for years. And I used to drink a little, and I haven't drank in years. Um, when I was in withdrawal, <laughs> I had a seizure and bit through the side of my tongue. Um, cracked my kneecap. Um, you know, things things like that happened. Um, heroin withdrawal, you could throw up for days. Shakes, hot, cold. Um, now, those are consequences of choices we made, okay? So that had to happen in order for the drug to come out of our system. And you can do it with some medical support. You know, the one time I did it, I was in jail. The other times, you have medical people around you to try to help you ease that kind of thing. That helps available with food, too. But then we get stuck in the foodie beauty loop of there's no help for obese people. There's no help for mental health services. I'm going to have to do this on my own. Let me read a book. Let me read a book about a psychic, you know, who has a diet plan. And then she's off. And then she's off. So we start at Arby's and get a big beef and cheddar. And then we go to Taco Bell, and we got a couple Dorito tacos. 
It's like she loves tacos but knows the consequences. Her words, she, she you know, says. Um, and she says, I know I want to have cheat days, but when you're weird about food, you can't. No, not at the beginning. Maybe later, once you get your eating habits under control. And I'm not talking about, you know, being on a diet or eating. Once you get your relationship with food, which is your relationship with yourself, and your relationship with the world uh, under control, those choices aren't as difficult to make. You can make them in a snap, and maybe you linger on it for a minute or two, and then it's gone. You're like, no, I'll have... I'll have the grilled chicken salad, I won't have the pizza. But then you don't think about it for 20 minutes, and you don't stare at the other person's food. That's freedom from the eating disorder. It's not not binging. Not thinking about it is the freedom from it. That's what you get. That's what I got from going through treatment and therapy and, and all that kind of stuff. So, so anyway, she's a Taco Bell, thinking about the bigger things in life. And um, she's still... <laughs> I still believe she ate more than she says in this video, but we'll keep going. Taco Bell, and then she ends up with Chinese. General Tao chicken, curry noodles, and a few egg rolls. Um, you know, we'd all love to have our cake and eat it, too. You know, I would love to be able to drink as much as I want, and then, you know, be able to still carry on a full-time job and pay the rent and pay the bills and have no relationship conflicts and have no issues with my family and none with the law and nobody else. Everybody who lives with some sort of fixation around something like that would love to be able to do it without consequences so i'm not judging her on that alone but once a person realizes they have a problem once they realize it if they do nothing about it then all the consequences like really become your own responsibility because it's one thing if you're totally unaware that anything's going on and you're just recklessly doing things but once it's been brought to your attention and you understand this is an issue and you choose to do nothing about it that's on you that's on me that's on mark that's on any of us so i don't know and i have food issues too i'd love to be able to eat as much as i want and not get big i love it food was my first drug of choice to be perfectly frank um, and it was the last one I'm able to even get a hold of. It's still a challenge sometimes. So, uh, she says, you know, I was going to wait till I'm ready, but if I, I'm never going to be ready. And that's the thing. That's what I mean when I say she gets it completely, but she doesn't get it at all. You can't wait till you're ready. This is Steve being a snob on a soapbox. Okay. Um, that's obnoxious. Let me take it back a second. Um, I couldn't wait till I was ready because I was never going to be ready. If I waited till I was ready, I'd be dead. Um, and there's never a good time to do it. It's like, well, I can't get sober today. It's Mardi Gras. <laughs> you know, um, tomorrow's not a good day to start a diet. It's Thanksgiving. You know, and she's going on her last binge. You know, that's like someone who goes out and it's like, just for one last time, just to use one more time, and then they overdose and die in a McDonald's bathroom. It was just that one last time they wanted to get high and something bad happened. Um, you know, there's only so many one last times that all of us have for any of our fixes. And that's scary, you know. Um, and I think she gets scared every so often, and I think she's a little scared now. Hence, what I guess we're going to be leading into is her new life. New choices, it's a new day, it's a new dawn, uh, better days are coming. And she's only going to need one seat on the plane. So we're going to pause here. I'm going to go watch the new video that just came out, and we'll be right back. Okay? Hang in there. Okay, so I just caught up on the last video. She just released it, like, maybe 40 minutes ago. Um, homemade cheeseburgers and what I ate today with Pete's. Now, this is the first day of a new life, or, or something. It's day one. It's the 3,000th day one. Okay? But, um... One of these day ones, I, I used to say this a lot more before when I still had hope. Um, and I suppose it's still true, I just still don't have hope. When any person's going to make a big life change, one of these day ones is going to be the real day one. You know, um, this could be hers. I'm not optimistic because <laughs> I don't think she has the wherewithal to pull herself out of the situation she's in. I think she needs help and I think she's not going to ask for it. But nevertheless... She can make cheeseburgers. So they went shopping, her and Pete's, and they get separate carts and they buy their own stuff and whatever. Um, she did a body shot because she was showing off the dress that she was wearing, and I don't even know if that was the point as much as the body shot. She um, 
I'm glad she could find clothes that she likes because she has a very probably hard body type to fit. She's unbelievably wide from the side, but from the front, I mean, she's a big girl, but not as much. Um, so it's got to be very difficult to find clothes. I, I know Torrid is a lot of people's go-to, but I know it's hard to find clothes not only that you fit into, but that you like. Sometimes bigger people's clothes tend to be geared towards like older women and stuff. So if she's happy in her clothes, I'm happy for her. But there hasn't been a shot of her recently that was like all the way around. And she's, it's heart attack weight too. It's right in the middle. But at any rate, um, for breakfast, she had toasted Ezekiel bread with vegan butter. Um, she said she'll relish the day that she can walk around a grocery store no problem. In this entire video, she looks out of breath and sweaty in almost every single cut. She goes through a list of the things they got. She got some THC chocolate, um, healthy choice meals from Terra, which are delicious, by the way. We just had them the other night. I had the green chili one. It was fantastic. Cage-free eggs, um, bananas, green, um... She had mentioned that, actually, in one of the videos this week, that somebody had made a comment about the bananas, and she's controlling his banana intake. Now, somebody else must have said it, other than me, because I'm not that guy that she watches, probably. Um, but at least I know I'm not alone in catching that, okay? Yes, is it blown out of proportion? Maybe. But does it speak to the nature of their relationship? I think so. Anyway. Sweet potatoes, cucumbers, shake and bake for Pete's. I like Pete's. I like shake and bake, too. Some yogurt, some soy milk, and some multigrain crap. Um, dinner, cheeseburgers, fries, salad. She's having some apricots for a snack. She makes salad dressing. Impressive. If I was going to have a meal, I'd probably, as long as it wasn't a mukbang, I would have the one with Chantal. She can cook. She used to cook all that food for BB, and, and it looked, you know, all right. Uh, they were trying to pick a movie to watch after dinner. She ate her THC chocolate. She's feeling in the mood. That might be deadly for her trying to do portion control. Um... It's not just because of the munchies, but it's the same reason, like, when you're on a weight loss journey, drinking isn't bad. It's not necessarily the calories in the alcohol. It's that you're disinhibited. You know, you make poorer decisions. And if you're, if you're already white-knuckling, you know, trying not to eat something and you get a drink or two in yet, or you get, catch a buzz and you're like, ah, whatever. You know, it, it's no big deal. I gotta live, right? Can I live? And then it turns into... A binge. You know, it can go really quick. Uh, her, she talks about her cats for like two minutes. It's a bunch of crap footage. Um, third meal was the taco bowl, which is good, but she put cheese and guac on it. But, uh, you know, her journey. Um, she's just trying to make it through the night and she's praying for the strength to do so. So, so that was her last video that just came out. So we're all, we're all up to date unless she puts out something or deletes something. So, a I used to be much more optimistic. This, as far as cycles go, is my favorite Chantal, though. The one who's a little more tail between her legs, a little more um, contrite, a little more uh, not so aggressively ignorant, um, not telling people who care about her, her subscribers, not me, because I'm, you know, I'm neither a fan nor a foe. I just, I'm just watching the show. Um, not telling people that are concerned about her to shut up and mind their own business. Um, that's the cycle that part of something that happens after this is that she will bring in probably some new people being on a journey like this and some other people will support her. And then when she changes her mind, um, and wants to do something different, they will, um, call her out on it, not in a mean way and say, I thought that's what you were doing. This is a lot less healthy. You said healthy was the goal. And she'll say, I changed my mind. I can do what I want. It's my channel. If you don't like it, don't watch. That's her prerogative, I guess. So, so we shall see. Um, I'm not even cautiously optimistic about this going on long term. But I will say, you know, every addict or, you know, obese person who wanted to get on a wellness journey or get their shit together, some one of these day ones is going to be the real day one. I don't think it's going to happen this time. But you never know. I'm wrong often. So we'll see. So thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe. Hit the like button and the bell on your way out so you can get all the alerts. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. Our email address and contact info is all listed down below. Thank you for watching and we will catch up with all of you tomorrow. Be well. Take care of yourselves. Bye.